Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's session of RESA Live. My name is Ashley Adams, and I'm a technical marketing engineer at RESA. I'm really excited to announce the release of the RESA Tecla Link version 10. This link is compatible with uh, Tecla Structures version 2020. So go ahead and head to our website and download this link if you are currently using version 2020 of Tecla Structures. We have a couple of features here today that I'm going to show you with, with this simple model that we implemented in the Tecla Link uh, version 10. So this structure here is, uh, it's a simple smaller structure, um, but I kind of wanted to show you guys an example of a structure that, um, or a scenario that you might actually use in practice. So kind of to set the stage, say that the engineer of record is designing a central utility plant for um, say it's a university or a hospital and this is an equipment platform that exists within that central utility plant so the engineer of record has been tasked with designing this uh, equipment platform as well as the entire central utility plant and common in this in these types of scenarios the fabricator will be the one who ends up designing the connections of these types of structures. Uh, the engineer of record will pass their design off to the connection engineer to then design the connections. So the example I'm gonna show you guys is how the engineer of record can easily set this type of structure up here in RESA 3D. They can pass this model off use to, to the fabricator through using the, the RESA Tecla link. And then the fabricator can begin the detailing of the project and then even take it a step further. And we'll bring this into RESA connection so that you can see how the fabricator can integrate RESA connection and design those connections back into Tecla. So I'm really excited to show you guys this today. We've got a couple features of the Risa Tecla Link version 10 that were added. One of them being rigid link elements. You can bring rigid link elements from Risa 3D into Tecla and vice versa. You can go back and forth that way. So another aspect is cardinal point offsets. So what cardinal point offsets mean um, is so we'll go ahead and render the structure here. And in RESA 3D, we all know that RESA 3D is a centerline based program. So if I go ahead and let's go to my model display options. And if I view my members to be 100%, and I'm gonna make them a little transparent so we can see a little bit better, you'll see that the columns frame into the center line of those beams. So this is great for the analysis portion of our project. We want this in RESA 3D. However, when we integrate this with Tecla, we'd really like for the tops of those beams to align with those tops of the columns so it can make that connection design much more efficient. So one way that we, we handled this within RESA is that you can modify these cardinal point offsets such that it doesn't affect the centerline analysis within RESA 3D, but it'll communicate efficiently with Tecla. So what we can do here is, I'm gonna show you how to use that. Um, what we can do, I'll, I'll go ahead and double click so we can view a member's information properties. And essentially what we're doing is we're, we're dealing with this detailing tab. And so this detailing tab is only available to you uh, if you have that option selected in the application settings. So before we kind of dig into that, I'll first point out to you that you can access the application settings through your tools. Oops, you can go to your application settings through your tools. And then there's this check option on the general tab that says show detailing information in this model. So if you're not seeing this when you click on your member information, you'd wanna make sure you come into your application settings and check that box. I have mine checked, so we're good to go. So real quick, we're just gonna make a change to this model. I'm only gonna modify the cardinal point offsets for this top level of the equipment platform. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly deselect the whole model. And I'm gonna select all of the top beams because I wanna make sure I get all of them edited at once. And so now that I have them selected, I'm gonna come to Modify, Members. And then I have the Member Detailing tab. So that's because I selected that in my application settings. So I wanna modify all these members. I'll make sure to check the Use box for both of those. And right now these are set to the mid depth. So let's go ahead and change this to be top center for both of them. And that's gonna align those tops of steels of those beams to, be, to frame into the top of those columns. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and choose to apply this to all my selected members. We'll select apply. 
And so it visually doesn't really look like much happened and that's okay. We can go ahead and verify this though, that we made some changes by, by displaying the 3D view or the, the rendered view. So right now it looks the same and you're probably wondering, oh, that didn't do anything. So all I need to do to make sure and verify that my detailing information is shown is come into my model display options and choose detailing info. So we wanna make sure that box is checked and then we'll go ahead and select apply and you can see that now all of those tops of steels are aligned and that's exactly what I want to be able to get some nice moment connections within TechLab. So I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And now we're kind of at a point where we can run a, a solution on this model. And so since this is kind of a, a structure that's interior to a central utility plant, we have seismic loads. We didn't really, we're not concerned about wind loads in this scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run, let's run a single load combination and we'll solve that. And so what you wanna do when you're integrating with Tecla through the Risa Tecla link is you'll wanna make sure after you run a solution to save our results. Saving our results will allow us to be able to pull those end reactions into Tecla, and then that way we can design our connections with Risa connection once we're in Tecla. So those reactions are important if we wanna continue that integration. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over now that we have our model run and saved. We can go ahead and switch over to Tecla. I've already had Tecla open here just to, to save us some time on an initialization. Um, I've got my 3D open, it's just a blank model. You'll see right after you install the Risa Tecla link, when you open Tecla, you'll see the Risa tab pop up here in the top right. So that's only gonna appear after you install that Risa Tecla link. So I can come over to this link here and I can select my analysis and design models. And so this is where I'm gonna bring in my analysis model. What I need to do in this screen is first, I need to create a new template essentially for my analysis design model. That's how I like to think of it. I kind of think of it as the settings, the template for your analytical model within Tecla. So I've got my analysis application set to Risa 3D. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to ch check this to make sure it's, it's my default for future. I'll select okay. And so that's just kind of the general application settings for, for my analytical model. So now what I need to do is import the geometry, the member sizes, and the, the, the reactions, all of that information actually from Risa. So once I click import, I am presented with this Risa Tecla link import. And so the first thing I need to do is browse to the location where I saved my model. So for me, I went ahead and saved that on my desktop. We'll come in and make sure that that file path aligns. And so now that I chose that model, it recognized that I've end reactions saved. So I can go ahead and pull those end reactions in. So I'll wanna make sure to bring the end reactions in and then also those cardinal points offsets that we, that we had modified. So I'll go ahead and uncheck the loads button. We don't need to bring those in. Furthermore, there is this mapping file editor option. I don't need to open this today. It, it takes a little bit of time to load, but I just wanna let you guys know that this option is here for you, that you can choose, this, this is kind of the translator between shapes, between Risa and Tecla, to make sure all of your shapes uh, are assigned the proper uh, geometry. So I'll go ahead and select okay. And so this is generating my analytical model in the background. So this first thing that we see here, is the Risa Tecla Link Summary Import. So this is where it's gonna tell you kind of everything that may have been modified or things to consider that, that might have been lost. Um, you should always review this warning log. I've reviewed mine. It looks like there's a couple issues with some unbraced lengths um, and it's notifying me that the vertical axis in Tecla is Z, whereas in Risa my vertical axis was Y. So I've read these warnings and I feel good about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OK. And so now you can see our analytical model here in Tecla. So when you zoom on in here, you can actually see these sticks and nodes is kind of just what I like to call them. And this is essentially how Tecla is communicating with Risa. You can see that these sticks, uh, these lines are at the top flange of my beams. And that is essentially what I did when I modified my cardinal point offset. So that's how these two models communicate with each other. So I'll go ahead and close out of this. And so now I've got my general 
Tekla model. So it's our typical model that we're used to seeing. And essentially we're at the point now where I'm the fabricator and I'm ready to assign some connections to my members because I want to be able to integrate with Risa Connection and actually design those. So in a, a list of available connections between the um, between Tecla structures and Risa Connection are available on our website. So I'm going to go through a few components, but we'll go ahead and show you guys that link here. So if you go to our website, you'll see a list of all the available connections to you. So if you're ever integrating and you're not sure which connections integrate, definitely visit this link. We'll be sure to include it uh, in, the, in the information below the video just to help you guys access that a lot more quick. So we'll go ahead and come back to Tecla. So I'm gonna assign some connections here. Let's go ahead and do, in my, in my applications and components dialog, I'm gonna go ahead and type in those number codes that we saw, and I'm gonna choose 141, and that's gonna be that standard clip angle. And so I'll come in here, and the first thing I wanna do is choose the girder and then the beam. And so that's gonna generate that clip angle connection. And then we'll do that again a couple of times. And I'm only going to do a few connections here just to give you guys the general idea of how you would go about doing this. Um, let's go ahead. We can do, let's do a couple more of these just standard clip angle connections. And I'm going to try and show you guys a few different connections here. The next one, let's do a shear tab HSS. We've got an HSS post here supporting our stair stringers and our stair landing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and assign a shear tab and it's gonna be a shear tab through plate. And we'll wanna select the column first and then the beam. And then to deactivate this, you'll need to press the center roller button on your mouse. So that's gonna give us our shear tab through plate. And we'll go ahead and let's do this for this member as well. And so now we've got that. And then now we've got moment frames up here. I can even show us how we'll, we'll assign some moment frame connections. The code for a moment frame is one, three, four. And so we'll go ahead and similar to the other ones, you select that what Tecla calls the main part and then the secondary part. And that'll assign that moment connection. We'll wanna be sure to get both sides of this. And we'll do this to complete the frame here. So now we've got a moment frame. And then lastly, let's do a chevron brace. Let's get one of our brace connections shown here. Now, there are a lot of connection options available, as I said, and you can see that on the, on the website. However, we're just gonna do just a few here, just in general, to give us an idea of all of the available options. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click my beam, and then also click my two braces, and then I'll have to select the center roller button on my mouse to activate that connection. We'll go ahead and do that here. Select both of those and then select the center roller button mouse on, on my mouse. So now that we have some connections set, um, say, say we assigned all of our connections and we're ready to design these in Risa Connection. Super easy to do. All we have to do is come up, make sure you're in that Risa tab, come up and select the export to Risa Connection. So I don't have to have Risa Connection open already. I can go ahead and just select export and we're going to see the Risa Tecla link pop up. And this is the translator. This is the communicator between the two programs. And it's going to give me that summary of my connections. Now that we've got Risa Connection open here, you can see I've got all of those four different connections that I imported. And you can see for each type of connection, all of the different type of connections that are available or that I assigned. So the quantity is all there, it would appear. So that all looks good. And to be able to solve these, I, I haven't specified any particular geometry. I'm not sure, you know, I'm gonna have to come in and actually modify some plate sizes and, and to be sure that these work. But just from the get-go, I always like to solve the project to see which ones work and which ones don't. So I've got some failures, so that means I'll need to come in here and make some modifications. But for the sake of time and for the sake of this project, I'm just going to show you guys quickly um, how to make a modification in just one of these standard clip angles. So within Risa Connection, you've got your 3D view. I always like to work in the 2D view. The 2D view is a lot easier for me to understand. You've got the side view as well as the front view. 
And you also have the option, while everything in your views is all, you're able to click and modify all within the actual 2D or the 2D view. But then that's also gonna highlight over here in this properties panel about all of the different types of variables within your connection that you can modify. So I think what the change that I'm gonna make here is actually gonna be the bolts. So I'm gonna select the bolts and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add an additional bolt. I'm gonna add four bolts. And so now that we've got this connection done, this is strictly just to show that we can make that update. I'm gonna choose export to Tecla. So I went ahead and pressed export. And what we need to do is actually come over here and here's our Tecla link. And you can see it's updating all of the connections based on these designs. So you can see that the results here match the results that I'm getting in recent connection. And all of that summary, it's being translated into Tecla. And so we'll go ahead and let's, let's view Tecla. And so we can zoom in on those clip angle connections and see that the four bolt change that I made within Risa connection has been updated. So you can go ahead and do this with all of those failing connections. Make sure you get all of the connections passing. You can bring that back into Tecla to continue your detailing process. So that's kind of a quick and easy way that you can start a simple model as an engineer of record, pass the model on to the connection designer and the detailer so that they can integrate in Tecla and then also integrate with Risa Connection. And that's a quick way, quick and efficient workflow that I think will really be applicable in many scenarios other than just this one. So I hope you guys found this beneficial. I really enjoyed my time with you today and we hope to see you on future Risa, uh, Risa live sessions. Thank you.